All right, let's go over crude oil. Here's what we got rolling here this morning. Let's go over the last uh, yesterday and today's trade so far. What we're looking at, here's some of the action we've had in the, since uh, yesterday morning. Um, we had a nice little uh, uh, 1030, 1054. We had a nice one at 2 o'clock yesterday, time of day trade. This is a big one yesterday. That was a break retest trade. I mean a um, a continuation trade, sorry. So, but if you notice, we got a short going on right now. This is one we got rolling right here, right now. We have a short uh, first target off. We do have the runner running. So, um, we want to make sure. Hold on one sec, guys. I'll be back in one. Okay, sorry about that. The uh, we got a short runner right now. I'm going to show you exactly how we want to do this. What we try to do, guys and gals, is we try to position ourselves long and short in these markets. Yesterday had some pretty good runners. Uh, we want to try to get the first position off and try to let the runner run. And letting the runner run using a trailing stop is a really good way to do it. This is the trend chart that I'm looking at right here. Um, the trend chart was showing down this morning. Um, the rolling position traders got uh, caught. The counter trend traders got caught on this bar. So what I want to do is, is I want to see if it's against a trend filter when the wrongly positioned traders get caught or the counter trend traders in the market when they come in the market against a trend filter I want to try to get the next swing and I want to try to get this next swing right there now a lot of times what happens when you first close above or below our MAs we got you get a nice little move in the market but this is a great example how we're short here in the market, how you want to go against the wrongly positioned traders. Now, yesterday, it was the same exact uh, technique. Um, yesterday, you could see that the trend filter was up pretty much all day or all morning. So what you want to do is wait for the wrongly positioned traders to come in, which are these red bars that print. Remember, when these red bars print against a trend filter that are counter trend traders in the market, we want to try to get these snapbacks. We want to try to get these runs that snap back in the market. So that's what we try to do. We try to focus on trying to position ourselves when the rolling position traders come in the market when there's a continuation pattern to the upside or downside. So how can we time the trade? I'll go over how we're going to time these trades. I'll show you exactly how you want to enter on a, on a trade short like this this morning. First 15 ticks was off, and now that runner is running. And the key is the trend chart. If you can stay on the side of the trend chart, what we try to do, this trend filter I built in with Ninja 8, it actually, what it does is it has a supply-demand indicator on higher lows, lower highs, and also other ingredients I built into the Renko bar. What's going to tell me if there's net buyers or pretty much net sellers coming in the market? Meaning, do we have, are they trying to mark the market up or mark the market down? So this morning's trade, or we'll look at yesterday's trades coming into the session. If you look at the afternoon trade, how they were doing it is you see the trend filter was up, the counter trend traders pumped it down, red bar, red bar, red bar, then we finally got a green reversal bar, and then we got a continuation to the upside. Same thing pretty much this morning. This morning, you want to stay on the smaller 8MA below it. If you are closing below it, once you get an opposite color candle that comes in, you know you're trying to catch the rolling position traders. You want to try to get that next swing. Now, what I've been finding a lot is once you close above or below, and I'll go over here in a second, this uh, longer MA, you usually get a nice snapback right away after it closes green or red, and you get that continuation, which we'll go over here in a second. But that's what we try to do. We're trying to position ourselves in the market on catching rolling position traders. Now, your stop losses um, when your stops, Standard stops can be two ticks below the swing high or swing low. That's the easiest way to do it. I do have a technique where after you pull yourself in, so this would be the stop loss here. I do have a technique to, that I show you guys. You can use a pull-in bar where you have real small stops, but you will get stopped out on M tops and W bottoms where you have to re-enter the trade. But we don't risk more than 13 ticks on any market no matter what. So you're not risking $100 more than $103 on any of these trades that's happened yesterday and today, even this one we got rolling out.
So we, we try to get a four to six to one reward to risk. That's what you're trying to do. So let's let's show you how why this is actually a sell setup and why that was an entry at this level. What we want to do is the same chart I'm going to show you right here on our trend filter. If I look at the trend filter right next to it, I have it in the room. And we also have a template built in for all markets if you guys trade other markets. So right here, this is the same exact chart, the 9 sim we're looking at over here. Why is that a setup? Why is that a short at this level? Because what happened is, is that you are now the weakest part of the market, the strongest part of the market is when you're above of all three MAs or below all three MAs. What I find a lot that happens with <clears throat> all these markets, and it doesn't matter if you trade futures, stocks, currency, ETFs, it's the same exact setup. I find when you close below all three and you get that first counter trend traders that come in, that first wave up is usually to swing high or swing low. And that happens, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of trades like this. It just consistently works on a constant basis. But more importantly, when that opposite color candle came in, your trend filter was already down. When you start closing 90% candle close below my small MA, that started the trend down this morning. You got to get ready for a short. So what you want to do is we have two setups. We have what's called a retracement trade and we have a momentum trade. A retracement trade is when you get an opposite color candle that comes in against the trend filter. Now remember, this isn't a standard Rinka bar. You can put all these Rinka bars up against this if you lease the program. You're going to see they're totally opposite. You're going to see a lot of Rinka bars that give buys when ours give sells. And what does that mean? It means I got the trend filter built into the Rinka bar, which Rinka bars don't have that capability of doing. I've never seen any Rinka bar that I've come across ever that has that capability. So I built into all these ingredients instead of having 15 plus indicators on one chart, I built everything into the bars. So when it closes red, there's distribution. When it closes green, there's accumulation. So what I want to do then, if my trend filter is down, if I'm closing below my small MA and I got a red handle, that's distribution. They're trying to mark the market down. So what I want to do is I want to wait till an opposite color candle comes in. If an opposite color candle comes in, I want to try to take the first retracement short. And that's what happened here. We got a first retracement short, and we're off to the races. Now, how can you time that trade then? How can you enter that trade and time it to get filled at 90-91 as a 90-91 fill depending on your slippage? <clears throat> so what you can do is you can actually use the SIM dots right next to it. I have Fibonacci arrows over here. These are retracement arrows. The sweetest spot in the market is the golden ratio. The golden ratio is 62% of swing highs and swing lows. So I have the filter automatically programmed to look for the golden ratio to fire these arrows. The golden ratio will look at several different swings, short-term, intermediate, long-term swings, try to find confluence, and then print an arrow. Why is that important? Because I know after the green bar that I know I got counter trend traders coming in. So now I know I got two possible trades. I got a retracement trade coming in with a couple ticks in my SIM dots. And then I got a momentum trade, which is the far right chart, the arrows, if it comes up and touches this small MA, enter bar. And if I get an arrow that prints, then I can enter the, enter the market if my market delta is closing down. So I mean closing red and below my small MA. So this entry can be based upon the, um, the Fibonacci arrows that fire. Once you get a Fib arrow that fires, you can literally enter the trade, put your stop loss, two ticks above that swing high, you're good to go. A more conservative way to do it is, is you can wait until you get an arrow that prints and then wait till the arrow close, I mean wait till your market delta closes, a portion body, a portion body candle close below the small MA, and you can place your stop one of two ways. You want real small stops, place it one tick above the entry bar. The partial candle close below my small MA. If you want to leave it two ticks above the swing high, make it easy on yourself. You can leave two ticks above the swing high. If you leave it, leave it two ticks above the swing high, your maximum risk is always 13 ticks for crude oil and gold, meaning you're risking $130 maximum on the trade. 
if you bring it down here, you're looking probably an average around 90 bucks. So you're saving yourself around four ticks. What it does, though, is it allows you to, if you leave it two ticks above the swing high, you won't get stopped out a lot on M tops and W bottoms. If you do this one, you're going to get stopped out on W tops and M bottoms. But you can re-enter the trade after Ws or Ms. So you almost get a two for one on this one sometimes because sometimes it stops even lower than that, depending on your slippage in the market. But the bottom line, what we that's the two trades we try to do. We try to do a momentum trade and a retracement trade. Now, I've got several videos on the website, momentum versus a retracement, but that's the skinny of it, is I'm using this trend chart to find out if I'm going to be a net buyer or net seller. And that's really going to help me out determine if I want to be a net buyer or net seller. The other easy way to do it is, is once you get across – of the smaller MA with the intermediate, you're typically going to get a retracement trade pretty soon, either way, on e each side. So when you see that, that confirms that when you need to close below all three, that first retracement is a really nice little trade to look for a short. All right, so that really gives you a clue what's going on if you need to look for being a net buyer, net seller. Obviously, if you're above all three or below all three, you're good to go. So that's the trade we're working on right now. It's got a runner running right now here on crude oil. So we'll see if uh, we can get that, uh, that as a continuation. All right, but use this trend chart as a guide. 